Now let's solve the same problem with different method, the vector method. In this method, I will denote arbitrary point on the angle bisector as point x, now using small x and small y, because that does not create much confusion in this method, and I will also call this intersection point x0. In order to understand this vector method, first we need to think about what do we need in order to uniquely define a line. Well, you might have learned in your basic coordinate geometry course that in order to uniquely define a line, you have to know at least one point that the line passes, and the slope of the line. If you know these two, you can find the equation of the line. Now, in vector equivalent, finding the equation of the line means finding the expression for this point x. And point x can be written in a vector form as the position vector ox, which is this vector right here, where this O is the origin, which works as a reference point for our position vector. So we need to know the coordinates of at least one point and a slope. In terms of vectors, knowing the coordinates of at least one point means knowing the position vector of at least one point on the line. In our example, we know the coordinates of this intersection point x0, which lies on the angle bisector. This means that we know this position vector, vector ox0. Next, we need to know the slope of the line. Here, another method of expressing the slope is by using the direction vector, which is a vector that is aligned in the direction of the line, like this blue vector. Here, let's call this direction vector d1. I used subscript 1 here, because there exists another angle bisector with different direction vector, which can be called vector d2. Now let's see what kind of equation we can create with these vectors. By vector addition, this position vector ox equals position vector ox0 plus this vector x0x. Here this vector x0x is parallel to the direction vector d1. This means that vector x0x can be expressed as a scalar multiple or real number multiple of the direction vector d1. Here this t is a varying real number. So we have vector ox equals vector ox0 plus t times vector d1, where t is a real number, or if you write vector ox as simply vector x, and vector ox0 as vector x0, we can express everything in terms of single letter vectors, which is vector x equals vector x0 plus t times vector d1. This is called the vector equation of a line, because now everything is expressed in terms of vectors. And here comes the next step. This position vector, x0, is given as 5,3. However, we don't know this direction vector d1 yet. So how can we find this direction vector d1, or the other direction vector d2? Well, we can find these direction vectors using these two vectors. That is, using the direction vectors of two given lines and the angle bisector condition. These direction vectors, denoted as vectors A and B, can be determined from the slopes of two lines. Then we obtain direction vector A as 3,4, because from the equation, you can easily find out that if x increases by 3 units, then y increases by 4 units, corresponding to the slope of 4 over 3. Similarly, we can obtain direction vector B as 12,5. Let us draw these vectors right here with the same starting point, because we are about to do some vector addition. But we must add up carefully though, because in order to obtain a vector aligned with this angle bisector, we must add up two vectors in directions of vectors a and b that have the same length. Therefore, let us think about the vectors in these directions with length 1. That is, the unit vectors in directions of a and b. Let us denote these vectors as a hat and b hat. Then vector a hat 
can be obtained by vector a divided by the magnitude of vector a or norm of vector a. And the same thing goes for vector b hat. The norm of these two vectors are square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, so 5, and square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared, which is 13, respectively. Therefore, a hat is 1 fifth of vector a, which is 3 comma 4, so we obtain 3 over 5 comma 4 over 5, and vector b hat is 1 thirteenth of vector 12 comma 5, so we have 12 over 13 comma 5 over 13. Therefore, if you calculate the sum of these two unit vectors a hat and b hat, which is this plus this, you will obtain 99 over 65 comma 77 over 65. Now this vector can be expressed as 11 over 65 times 9 comma 7. And since d1 can be any vectors in this direction, let us choose one that's as simple as possible such as 9 comma 7. So we obtained vector d1, but what about this vector d2, the direction vector for the other angle bisector? Well, this is rather simple. You just draw vector minus b hat, the unit vector having opposite direction to b hat, and if you add a vector a hat and vector minus b hat, you will obtain a vector in the direction of vector d2. The actual calculation gives vector minus 21 over 65 comma 27 over 65, which can be written as 3 over 65 times minus 7 comma 9. So let's choose minus 7 comma 9 as vector d2. Here I have used vector a hat minus b hat, but you can also use b hat minus a hat which is the vector in this direction. So now with these two direction vectors, we can obtain the equation for each angle bisector. First, the angle bisector with direction vector d1. Let us recall our vector equation. Position vector ox for arbitrary points equals vector ox0 plus this vector which is t times the direction vector d1, where t is the real number. Here, vector ox is vector x, y, so we have this equals vector ox0 is 5, 3, so this plus t times the direction vector 9, 7. So we have x, y equals 9t plus 5, 7t plus 3, where t can have real values. This is called the parametric equation of the line, because now it is expressed using this real number t as a parameter. In order to obtain a single equation for the line, we simply eliminate this parameter t. Since we have x equals 9t plus 5, and y equals 7t plus 3, from the first equation, we have t equals x minus 5 over 9. Substituting this into the second equation eliminates the parameter t, and we obtain y equals 7 times x minus 5 over 9 plus 3, which is 7x minus 8 over 9, which rearranges to 7x minus 9y minus 8 equals 0. Also, for the angle bisector with direction vector d2, the position vector ox equals ox0 plus now this vector, which is t times the direction vector d2. So we have x, y equals 5, 3 plus t times now vector minus 7, 9. So x, y equals now minus 7t plus 5, 9t plus 3. So x equals minus 7t plus 5, 
and y equals 9t plus 3. From the first equation, we have t equals minus x plus 5 over 7. So using this to eliminate t in the second equation, we obtain y equals 9 minus x plus 5 over 7 plus 3 which is minus 9x plus 66 over 7. So we have 9x plus 7y minus 66 equals 0. So this is the vector method. And although this method looks much more complicated than the first method, it is the only practical method when it comes to 3D cases. So let us take a look at 3D case right now. The most notable feature in 3D coordinate geometry is, in order to indicate directions in 3D space, vectors are absolutely necessary. For example, let us take a look at these two equations of lines in 3D space. Now I don't want to go too deep into 3D coordinate geometry, so for now let me just tell you that in this expression, the numerator tells us the one point that this line passes through, which is 2, minus 1, 3 and the denominator contains the information about the direction vector of the line. In this case, this line has the direction vector minus 2, 3,6, which is this vector a. For the second equation, the numerator tells us that the line passes through point 2, minus 1, 3, and the denominator tells us that the direction vector of this line is 2, 2, 1, right? which is this vector b. So these two lines definitely meet at this point, 2, minus 1, 3. From here, in order to find the direction vectors d1 and d2 of angle bisectors, we do the following. First, we calculate the unit direction vectors a hat and b hat. Then, we calculate the vector sum a hat plus b hat and a hat minus b hat. So let's do that. So the unit vector a hat is vector a divided by the norm of vector a. So vector minus 2, 3, 6 divided by square root of minus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 6 squared. And since it is 7, we have minus 2 over 7, 3 over 7, and 6 over 7. And similarly, b hat is vector b divided by the norm of vector b. So, 2, 2, 1 divided by square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. And since this is 3, we have 2 over 3, comma 2 over 3, comma 1 over 3. Therefore, their sum a hat plus b hat is 8 over 21, comma 23 over 21, comma 25 over 21, and their difference a hat minus b hat is minus 20 over 21, comma minus 5 over 21, comma 11 over 21. Here, for direction vectors d1 and d2, let us take the simplest ones, that is, vectors with least possible integer components. And that would be vector d1 as 8, 23,25 and vector d2 as 20,5, minus 11. Using these, we can totally find the equations of these two angle bisectors. For this one, it is the line that passes through this intersection point 2, minus 1, 3, and the direction vector is 8, 23, 25. Therefore, if you recall what I have just explained about the equation of the line in 3D space, the equation should be x minus 2 over 8 equals y plus 1 over 23 equals z minus 3 over 25. And for this one, it is the line that passes through this point, 2, minus 1, 3, and the direction vector is 20, 5, minus 11. So the equation is x minus 2 over 20 equals y plus 1 over 5 equals z minus 3 over minus 11. 
And with that, we also had a brief taste of the fascinating world that is three-dimensional coordinate geometry. And that was all for today's video. If you want to know how you can find a point that is symmetric with respect to a line or a plane in 2D or 3D, please go check out these videos as well, and I will see you in another video.